I would say that an institution is ready to implement learning analytics when when they um, understand that data can make a difference and that uh, the, the will is there, you know, to use this data to make a difference to the quality of what they do. Um, I think the buy-in needs to be at every level within an organisation. Managers should understand the technical staff, um, curriculum leaders, teachers, students. It's a question of communicating that vision throughout the organisation. I think once you've got that kind of cultural buy-in, the rest of it can follow the, the, the kind of technical aspects, the making sure your systems are talking to each other, that the data's in the right format. All that can follow on from the, uh, the cultural position. I think problems can occur where one part of the organisation thinks that they can implement learning analytics on their own. And wh whatever part of the organisation that is, it, it doesn't work. It might be the governors or the technical team or the curriculum teams. Um, they might think that they can do something in, in an isolated pocket, but it really needs everyone to work together to make it to make it happen, really. And it's not so much the collecting of the data. There are obviously challenges in collecting the data in the right format, but the real issue is what are you going to do with that data? You know, who is going to make the intervention? You know, what is the change in behaviour that you're expecting? I think that all that needs to be pinned down uh, if you're going to see any impact. The learning analytics onboarding process is a set of steps that we've derived from our experience of implementing uh, with several institutions, uh, universities and colleges in the UK. Uh, the process has been developed to allow institutions to go through a process of readiness to understand where they are. One of the great strengths of the onboarding process is it allows an institution, whether a university or a college, to get themselves to a state where they've got the data in the learning records warehouse and the processes in place and to have made a decision as to what solutions they want to implement on top of that. So it's a common framework, it's a common, common baseline for universities or colleges to get together that doesn't tie them into a particular solution um, at the end of the onboarding process. Stage one of the onboarding process involves institutions just getting in touch with JISC and engaging with the learning analytics network. So there's three steps in that stage. They sign up to our email list, they um, participate in some of our network meetings and events, and they're encouraged to look at the resources and reports that we've already written which are on our blog site. Stage two of the onboarding process um, involves institutions looking at their uh, institutional readiness to implement learning analytics and trying to decide on the type of analytics solution that they might want to take forward. The important aspects there are about getting um, governance and institutional support in place and deciding what are the aims and objectives of learning, implementing learning analytics for that university or college. Stage three of the onboarding process involves institutions looking at the outcomes of the readiness assessment and deciding on any actions that they need to take, um, looking at what learning analytics solution they want to take forward and that will have implications for the next steps. This stage, if they want to go forward and implement the JISC architecture, they'll need to sign up to the data processing agreement and they should be looking at the legal and ethical issues um, and then deciding on what pilot groups they want to implement um, and what solutions they're going to take forward. Stage four of the onboarding process involves institutions gathering two types of data, historical data um, to help train the learning analytics predictive model, and then live data um, that they will then use to do the predictions with the students um, as they progress. So we gather data from a number of sources. Initially it's student information from the student record system, and then learning activity data from systems such as the virtual learning environment, or attendance data. Um, we encourage institutions to first of all look at a minimum viable data set and not to expand the data that they collect initially so that this makes it quicker to implement and to get started and then expand on the data later on. Stage five of the onboarding process involves them starting to implement solutions and tools on top of the learning records warehouse. So these could be analytics tools to do predictive analytics, to do visualizations, 
um, or it could be implementation of the student app. From the institutional side, there are a number of key people that need to be involved. First of all, I think the institution has to know who's going to own the whole, whole process. You know, they, it needs to be a person who's willing to take responsibility for the success of the implementation of learning analytics. And then um, there are certain processes that you have to go through. For example, there's a data processing agreement that has to be signed by a person who understands what's involved, who understands uh, the risks and the commitments that they're making. You need data teams involved who are going to actually ensure that the data is provided to the system in the right format. And most importantly, there are the people who have kind of taken it upon themselves to act on the data that comes out. So whether that's teaching staff or support staff or students themselves, um, they really need to be on board in my view for the intervention to have any impact. Stage two, the institutional readiness, will involve as many staff and students in the institution and consultation on their readiness as an institution to implement learning analytics. So the wider the consultation with staff and students in the institution, the better. Having senior management buy-in is very important, so they will need to be involved in stage two and stage three of the implementation. And then as the onboarding process moves on into stage three and stage four, more staff need to get involved at a more operational level. So people who are involved in data protection, um, academics who might be interested in the learning analytics will get involved more. Um, and also for stage four, the technical staff and the people who own the data and the data implementation. The effort involved in each of the steps in the onboarding guide is, is quite difficult to estimate, but the guide does give an indication. It uses a star rating indication to suggest the time and effort involved in each of the steps for an institution. However, this will depend very much on an institution's own resource and capacity, um, how much support they require from JISC or a third party to implement it. So, but they are there as indicators as to the size of an activity under each step. Institutions can start the onboarding process at different stages depending on their own readiness. So some institutions may already be quite involved in JISC in the project up until this stage. Uh, they may already have undertaken some sort of review or assessment of their readiness, in which case they're ready to start at stage three in the onboarding process and start looking at implementation um, both at a cultural and organisational level and a technical level. There are dependencies um, between some of the steps in the onboarding process so you can't jump ahead in that sense but most institutions can can tick off quite a few of the steps in the process before they get started. For example an, a university that may have already undertaken some data analytics may have already got some of their data together into their own learning records warehouse or their own data warehouse. So this would make it much easier for them to collect the data and to process it into our learning records warehouse. Also, if they've been looking at our um, code of practice for, learn for legal and ethical issues, or they've attended lots of our learning analytics network meetings, they're going to be in a more mature state to, to get involved in the project and to start implementing. The first two stages of the onboarding process are pretty much set up so the institutions can implement them um, with minimum support from JISC. JISC will provide support to help them understand the process uh, and if necessary to, to help them through the discovery readiness process but they're pretty much self-supported activities. Um, once institutions have progressed to, to stage three and stage four, then JISC will provide support to uh, implement the data processing agreement, to implement the learning analytics um, strategy and policy around legal and ethical areas, and also to uh, do the technical integration of the data into the learning records warehouse. The onboarding process is an evolving set of steps which we will continue to design and develop as we learn more experience from implementing with the universities and colleges in the UK. The use of that data and what's being collected is also a very important part of this process.
if you think of any major retailer, any bank or any kind of supermarket chain, I can't imagine them not using analytics. They use every bit of data that's available to them to improve their business, to improve their customer experience. It's our duty to do this for learners. You know, we've got this data about them. We can use it in a structured, positive way to help the learning process. I think it's our duty to do that.